Hi, welcome to Storytime with Gigi. Today we're reading a story from the Disney Christmas Storybook Collection, A Treasury of Tales. Our story today comes from Beauty and the Beast, called The Enchanted Christmas. Winter had settled over the castle grounds. Belle looked out the window at the snow-covered trees. She tried to make the best of those cold, wintry days, but she was sad. Christmas would be here soon, and she wished she could be home to celebrate with her father. As long as she was a prisoner in the Beast's castle, she was forbidden to leave the grounds. Then she had a wonderful idea. She could celebrate Christmas at the castle with her new friends. She hurried off to find them and share her plans. Out of the question, Cogsworth the clock said when Belle told him her idea. The master has forbidden Christmas. Belle couldn't believe what she was hearing. No one can forbid Christmas. I, for one, think a little Christmas cheer would do him much good. The girl is right, agreed Lumiere, the candelabra. It is up to us to do something. Cogsworth was still unsure, but as soon as Belle mentioned Christmas pudding, the clock changed his mind. If the master finds out about this, he will be furious, warned Cogsworth, so everybody keep quiet. The surprise didn't last long, though. When the beast found out, he growled with anger. I hate Christmas, he roared to Forte, the pipe organ. Forte was the only one who understood how upset the beast had been since the curse had been placed on the castle. The beast had once been a handsome prince, but one day he had refused to help offered refused to offer help to an old woman. When she saw his selfishness, she turned him into a beast and all of his servants into enchanted objects. Before the magical curse, Forte had been the court composer. None of the other servants had liked him or his music, but they had always listened politely. Now that the beast was unhappy, Forte could play sad songs all the time. The beast often came and sat by the fire and listened to the music. Forte liked that he was important to the master. He did not want this to change. Meanwhile, Belle and her friends started to plan their Christmas celebration. Belle was excited to see the enchanted objects, eager to celebrate the holiday. I'll see to the dinner, Mrs. Potts, the teapot said. I'll get some mistletoe, offered Lumiere. Belle looked around. We need to brighten up this place, she said. She went to the attic to fetch some more decorations. She found the angel that would sit on top of the Christmas tree. She also found some candles and festive Christmas balls to hang from the branches. With the help of her friends, Belle hung the ornaments around the castle. It was finally starting to look and feel a little more like Christmas. Chip, the teacup, could hardly contain his excitement. We're going to have the greatest Christmas ever, he exclaimed. Next, it was time to find a Yule log. Belle went to the boiler room and looked around. Finally, she found one she liked. Just then, the beast stormed into the room. He snatched the log out of her hands. It's a Yule log, Belle said. It's a wonderful tradition. Everyone in the house touches it and makes a Christmas wish. Wishes are stupid, growled the beast. You made a Christmas wish last year. Is this what you wished for? No, Belle replied, but I will keep wishing. And when the log is burning on Christmas morning, there will be no Christmas, insisted the beast. I am the master here. Belle was upset, but she decided to continue with her Christmas plans. The next morning, she and Chip set out to find a tree. They were looking for one that was tall and wide, but all the trees near the castle were too skinny or too small. Belle had brought along an axe just in case. She decided to bring back one of the small trees. It would have to do if she couldn't find anything else. When Belle returned to the castle, she heard Forte playing his music. She went to see him. Forte didn't like Belle. 
He wanted to get rid of her so the witch's curse would never be lifted. That meant he would always get to play his sad music. The organ asked Belle how the Christmas plans were coming. Belle told him that she wished she could find the perfect tree to decorate. Forte told her to go into the Black Forest, even though he knew it wasn't safe. Belle looked out the window. The dark forest was in the distance. It looks dangerous, she said. Mademoiselle, you are in more danger in this very room, I assure you, Forte lied. Belle agreed to go into the forest and soon set off in her sleigh. After she left, Forte ordered Fife, the flute, to follow her. He wanted to make sure she didn't come back. A little later, the beast began to look around the castle for Belle. He couldn't find her anywhere. He looked into his enchanted mirror. Show me the girl, he ordered. In the mirror, he saw Belle riding through the forest. He was furious. Forte tried to convince the beast that he was better off without her, but it was no use. His master was not ready to let the girl go. The beast went after Belle, determined to bring her back. In the forest, Belle and Chip found the perfect tree. They tied it to the back of the sleigh with a rope, but Fife was lurking in the forest. He made a high-pitched sound that caused Belle's horse to rear back in fear as the sleigh crossed a frozen pond. The horse broke loose from the sleigh. Crack! The ice began to separate. Belle gasped as the teacup in the tree fell into the water. With a deep breath, she dove in and grabbed hold of Chip. She swam to the surface and put the little teacup safely on land, but Belle was pulled back under the water by the rope from the tree. Luckily, the beast arrived at that moment. He dove into the water just in time and saved Belle. The beast brought Belle back to the castle. He locked her in the dark, cold dungeon. You said you'd never leave, he said angrily. Bell sat huddled against the wall. I wasn't trying to leave, she insisted. I just wanted to make you happy. The beast wouldn't listen, though. You broke your word, and for that you will rot in this dungeon forever. Then he slammed the door behind him. Bell cried quietly. I should have known you'd never be anything but a beast. When the beast returned to his room, he discovered a gift that Bell had left there earlier. It was a book she had written just for him. Upon reading the story, the beast realized that Belle had seen through his sadness and anger. She knew that deep down he was good. The beast ran to the dungeon and asked her to forgive him. Belle agreed at once. Forte was angry about the way things turned out. So beast gets the girl and it's a happy ending for everyone, he muttered. Enchantment lifted and Forte fades into the background, no longer important, no longer needed. I think not. The jealous organ blasted his music throughout the castle. The walls shook and windows shattered. Forte, enough, the beast commanded. The organ wouldn't listen, though. He kept playing. Is this happy enough for you, master? Forte said. Finally, the beast did the only thing he could. He smashed the keyboard. The music ended. Forte tried to play his notes, but no sound came out. He angrily tore himself away from the wall. The evil organ crumbled and broke into many pieces, never to play again. Everyone was relieved that Forte wouldn't be around anymore. Now happy music could play throughout the castle. On Christmas Day, the beast escorted Belle into the main hall. The whole castle had been beautifully decorated and everyone was full of good cheer. It was a Christmas no one would ever forget, especially the beast. For on that day, Belle gave him the gift of hope. The hope that someday the curse would be lifted and life in the castle would return to normal. And that's our story. I hope you liked it. That's also been made into a movie. Have you ever seen it? Well, make sure that you like and subscribe and share with your friends. Bye until next time.